Hi friends, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. This is a channel where I typically like to make videos about what I'm reading as well as videos about homeschool, mostly book related. Today's video is going to be a homeschooling video, a review video of the curriculum Gentle and Classical Nature. I posted a review video recently on Gentle and Classical Preschool Level 2. And I'll link it above and then I had a, a number of requests for me to go through the science associated with that curriculum which is gentle and classical nature and so that's what i'm going to do today it's a really fun program and i'm really excited to share it so a couple basic things about this curriculum is it is a nature exploration program as kind of a science for the younger years it is written by erin cox she developed all the programs in the gentle and classical series i will link her website down below and please have a look at what she has because she she really produces some amazing stuff and her um, curriculum is actually a PDF download that's free and then she produces these really amazing visuals or bundles that you can print off and those are very reasonably priced so it's, there's actually three terms and then each term has 12 units so 36 units so it, it really can span a year two years however you want to make it work for your family it is a program that is Charlotte Mason inspired Erin recommends you also pick up home education by Charlotte Mason it's a book where she talks a lot about her philosophy on home education and the different aspects like teaching the whole child, getting out in nature, things like that. And so this is just a really good book. It really does help you understand how best to use this program or, or what aspects of the program you want to use. And also the, the classical aspect has a lot more to do with memorization of just the different science um, terms, not early terms. It's more like science statements that we're learning in each unit on like amphibians or freshwater fish or arachnids, things like that, is there's usually a memory statement associated with that as well as some Spanish statements. So I'll, I'll get into that in just a second, but that's kind of where the classical aspect comes in. So the first thing I wanna do is do big picture. I wanna kind of talk a little bit about how the program is set up. Then I wanna zoom in on a specific unit and give you kind of the details of how a unit is set up and then I want to go through some materials and books that support the program and then kind of finish out with how we've used it, how we're currently using it, things like that. So let me just flip you around really quick and we can have a look inside the curriculum. Here's Gentle and Classical Nature and I just, there's some things I love. Her artwork in all of this is outstanding and it's one of my favorite parts. So the cover is very pretty. The program is really split into kind of two main sections. So let me show you that really quick. So here's Here's a setup where it goes through different terms, term one, two, and three. And like I said, this is island, waterways, and forest. Upcoming is coastal woodlands and oceans, and then down on the farm and around the world. So there's some exciting stuff coming. It isn't out yet as of the time of this video, but I'm sure it will be soon. And so this one's the one I'm going to be talking about. And here are the, the 12 units. And amphibians, fish, reptiles, birds. It's really, really fun. What I mean by the program is split into kind of two different sections is there's a section called attainments and nature focus both you can do the whole program in its entirety or you can do just focus on attainments which i'm going to get to in a second i'll explain what that means or you can just focus on nature or you can do nature and attainments or you can just use this program for the book lists and some of the the bundles or the the printables so there's just really a lot of different ways you can use this program attainments is a charlotte mason idea this is a list of things that a child of six should be able to do. And some of these things are highlighted are the ones that are really focused on in this program, such as being able to recite some beautiful poems. And I love the nature poems that Erin has, has chosen for this curriculum. Also, the kids will learn how to use a compass and understand directionality and have the ability to describe different landmarks, especially nature related landmarks like lakes or rivers or ponds. And I'll get into kind of how that's chosen or how I chose that. And then it just goes on where it talks about like the idea that, that we, we can teach our kids what the tree is outside in our front yard or in our neighbor's yard or around the block. And then they can recognize, oh, that's an elm. Oh, that's a pine tree. Oh, that's a spruce. And they could just know these things from growing up because they're just exposed to continuous repetition. And we just talk about them as well as flowers and birds and pets. And, and so that's kind of the idea behind the attainments. And so part of this nature program focuses in on, on those things. And you'll see that as we go through one of the units. And like I said, the other section is more of just the nature. It's more of understanding 
just really the nature, learning more about frogs and the frog life cycle, learning more about butterflies and the different stages of the butterfly. So that's kind of generally how it's set up, big picture speaking. So the next thing I want to do is go through one of the units. So for instance, the first unit is amphibians. And the beginning is really an overview. You read through it, there's some wonderful things for parents, like you you can look through some of these YouTube videos or um, blogs that teach you more about the, the subject so that you can drop some of those nature nuggets on your children when you're, say, doing a nature walk. You could be like, oh, can you see this? Do you know why the frogs lay their eggs here? Or things like that. She also has these projects. For instance, you can start with a tadpole project where you order a tadpole off of Amazon, grow it up, release it. It's really fun. Then she gets into this, unit one, attainment. So if you have decided you want to attempt the attainments, then she gives great help on that. So she's like, okay, for this unit, we're gonna focus on one walk, one view, or a poem, one handicraft. And so you can kind of start your planning. Same it here if you're looking at the at a glance page, which this was probably my favorite spread for planning. You have some memory work, you have the books you're looking through, so you're kind of learning about amphibians. This last page has a lot to do with the field trip, and she has different ideas for like, but do you live in an area where you can actively easily find frogs? How do you do that? Here's some ideas, or if you don't, maybe you should visit a pet store. So she really does a good job of giving you those hands-on ideas, and I think ideas are very helpful, especially for me in planning, is I'm like, I don't know where to go, I don't know how to like show them real frogs. Okay, to go back to this page, this is, like I said, the main page I use for planning. So every Sunday, I would go through this page and I'd see what we have coming up. I'd switch over my memory board and I'd look at the books and I'd put the books in my book basket. But what I did monthly is I would go through these units at a glance here and I'd look up the books, these optional books especially, and I'd look at my library and see what we can get. And so I would do that often. But as for the books that are more spines, I purchased those. And I can show you a quick look at a book list that she has, so highly recommended books and resources. So for the spines, I, I purchased them all. And there's some wonderful, these are some of our favorites. You might actually already own them because they are kind of well known and well loved. Over and under the pond, as well as up in the garden and down in the dirt. These are beautiful books. Highly recommend those, those are on the the science finds that you'll kind of read over and over and then there's nature anatomy by julia rothman i think yeah and it also comes with food anatomy and farm anatomy and the farm would be nice for that term three and so i ended up just getting the whole set and these books are beautiful so i'm going to show you this is kind of a beat up copy of ours but the the nature anatomy books i feel like they are well known in the homeschooling world but they are perfect for this curriculum so beautiful books. I love those. For the read-alouds, it's the Frog and Toad storybook. So we got our storybook treasury. And so we picked this up and we love it. I mean, we've read these no, a number of times. They're so wonderful and they're so good at teaching manners and kindness. And things. And so that is here. So what she'll, she'll kind of tell you what to read. Like in the case of the frogs, is it's just over and under the pond. And then a couple pages of Nature Anatomy and then a couple pages or 20 about 22 pages per unit in frog and toad we would just read a story or two i wasn't too worried about the number of pages so you can see that and then the optional books here like we did pick up this dk encyclopedia of animals i really like it and so then you look up the page on on frogs this is kind of where the learning happens and then the memory stuff that has more to do with her bundles is her PDFs are free and you can pay to have them printed and bound like I did. And then she has all of these extra printables that go along with it that you can get printed. And I did, so let me show you a couple of those right now. Like I said in my other video, I tend to, to print, laminate, cut it out, and then put it into page protectors and put it in a big binder. It just keeps me really organized and it helps me be like, okay, unit one, let me grab my amphibian unit. And then it's really easy to switch out my memory board. So like here's the like the science statement. This is the level one and there's different levels for how old your kids are. I went with level one because my kids are six years old, four years old, and then I have twin two-year-olds. So it has that and then she has some Spanish or French. We pick Spanish cards that you put up and then um, we can work on learning a, a few little Spanish terms that are very nature related. 
Then I also picked up, and I really like the three-part Montessori cards. And so I would print those out, and we would play lots of different games with these. Um, matching games or, or just different things. My kids enjoyed these as well. So those were some of kind of the hands-on activities that we did a lot of. Some of the other things she had were things like a frog life cycle. So you could put this up on the board. We put this on the board, and then we talked a lot about the different parts to the, the life cycle. Here's an example of some of the beautiful nature poems she has available. I love these. And then she also has a couple other printables that you can use for planning. Some, planning some of your attainments, like your flowers and trees and poems and walks, nature walks. And here's a menu of different handicraft ideas. I think I've mostly covered everything I want to show you in the curriculum, as well as the books and different printables that I have. So I'm going to flip it back around and talk a little bit more about how we have used it and how we're planning on using it again. Well, I have a little helper. But I wanted to finish out this video by kind of explaining how it works best for us. So like I mentioned, I have a six-year-old, four-year-old, and twin two-year-olds. So I have loved this program. I'm very intrigued by Charlotte Mason and how she just pushes for just more of a gentleness in learning, a gentleness in getting outside and, and, and reading a lot of wonderful books. And I loved the idea of her attainments. And so, but with the age of my kids, I went into the program knowing that I had to hold it really loosely. I had to just kind of do my best and see kind of what worked for us. We tried nature walks. We tried doing consistent nature walks, like going to a different body of water or a pond. We have some, um, okay. we do have some places we like to go consistently. And we tried collecting things like flowers and trees and listening for birds. And that was good and it worked and they loved it. What they didn't love, and I think this might have been their ages or the fact that we have these guys, is they didn't love identifying it. Like the idea of identifying and keeping a list and keeping a journal, not so much, but they loved collecting it and we'd, have, we'd come home from just different walks with just a whole handful of stuff. And oftentimes we'd watercolor, sometimes we wouldn't, sometimes we'd just throw it away. Um, sit back, buddy. Oh, my gosh. So I just do it when I can. I try for every other week. We try to go and do some nature stuff and it's really fun. And I've, I've taken a lot of things I've learned from the program and used it kind of on our nature studies. It's just not as structured as it was at the beginning or how the program is written. But that's one thing I really, really like about this program is you can take it and you can kind of make it as structured as it is written, but it is also written very flexible also written by saying like take what works for you and make it work for your family so I really like that another aspect of the program that really worked for us was the books so we already kind of had a, a loose morning basket and we were able to take these science books and these memory statements and really incorporate it in our morning basket or the things we were doing first thing as we were learning about these different animals so I really did like that we are not currently using it only because of the age of the twins. It was a little easier when they were a little younger, like oh, like one years old, first two years old. They're a lot more, of, they don't stay in their stroller, they run around at parks. And so it's a lot harder to do nature stuff um, right now. Okay, to wrap this up, love the books. I love the nature. I loved all the ideas. And I, I'm really excited to get back into this program. I'm excited to pick up the next couple terms and also to know that like my kids will get older and it will get a little easier so as long as we keep just a general nature idea in our homeschool I can pick back up more structure later okay well now that the other one has started crying I should probably be done I would love questions if you have any questions sorry I had to kind of wrap this up quickly mm -hmm. but um, yeah let me know what you think of the program or if you currently use it or if you have questions about using it in the future. So thank you for listening. Thank you for stopping by. Please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing this video with anybody you think might benefit from a little bit more knowledge on the gentle and classical, um, on the gentle and classical nature program. I know brother's crying. Okay, we better go. All right, thank you. All right, take care.